What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vlog TCast. Welcome back to TCast. I'm changing the name, so I keep forgetting that I changed the name. But welcome back to TCast. <laughs> this is my first episode with two cameras, um, and in this episode, I'm introducing my parents, Mr. Bob Korsniewski and Mrs. Dandy Korsniewski. Okay, so we are talking about the Camino because my parents just got back from the Camino. Uh, and I wanted to test out my two camera system. We've already done the podcast or half of it and then my camera malfunctioned. So we got to do a shorter, more interesting version. I need a high energy. We're paid for two episodes though, aren't we? Yeah, so this will this will just double my payment. Um so you just got back from the Camino about a month ago. Santiago in Spain. Mm hmm And you walked roughly how many mi- kilometers? Yeah, three hundred kilometers, about two hundred miles. Okay. And you started, so you left America on July 16th. 15th. 15th. 15th or 16th. 15th or 16th. Yeah, one of those days. Yeah, and you, 16th maybe. And you left from Dulles. Yeah. Flew to? Flew to Madrid. Madrid. Yeah. And you, you landed there and had to take up a whole bunch of different transportations, trains, cars, buses. Train to the, uh, basically a train to the downtown Madrid train station, then a bus to, I'm sorry, a train to Pamplona where we overnighted before eventually a bus to St. jean pierre de port mm. Okay. So and then you started walking on the 19th. Yep. All right. And this was both of your second time on the Camino. My fourth time. Fourth, oh right, fourth time. Yeah, Jeez, I forgot. Oh my gosh. second time, my fourth time. That's right. Um, so mom, the first time you went on the Camino, you got injured. The first time on the Camino, I started at Astorga and walked to Santiago and um, just 12 miles short of Santiago, I fell and broke my arm. So oh my. the first time to Santiago was by ambulance. Oh my gosh. Uh, where Julia tra- translated and interpreted the whole time in Spanish. In the hospital, x ray, the doctor set my arm and. Um, it feels like you're trying to avoid the microphone. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then she, uh, we walked just another five miles the next day and then. Um, finished by cab so that was my first time to Santiago okay and so this time you started in St. Jean Pied de Port which is the French Pyrenees okay and we uh, spent the night in Orson which was a five mile walk up into the Pyrenees of France Mm -hmm. and then crossed over into Spain and we walked um, for about two weeks and ended in Burgos okay so that's about halfway I think yeah just about halfway it right up to the hardest part, I've heard. Burgos is one of the hardest part. The hardest part, actually, the first day is supposed to be the hottest. Oh, in the Pyrenees. In the Pyrenees. So after Burgos, because a piece called the Maceta. Okay. So it's eight days of walking on very flat terrain. Gotcha. So it's different mm-hmm. and I think lovely, but that's the part, the only part your mother hasn't yet done, and Julia as well. I, I haven't either, right. obviously, but I haven't yet done the beginning either. So, um, uh, for those of you that haven't heard or don't know, I did the Camino in 2013 um, with my sister and my dad, but they have all individually come back several times. I have not yet. Um, Mom, how was your how was your time on the Camino? Do you enjoy it? What was your? It was fabulous. We yeah? met people from all over the world and saw amazing um, views and mountains and. Um, we met great people, and um, I kind of uh, give it an analogy as to life. You get up early in the morning, and some mornings, and it's very dark and um, when you start, and some mornings are kind of an easy walk. Some mornings are straight uphill or straight downhill and cobblestone roads, and some mornings it was thundering and lightning, and, and the sun comes out, and it's a beautiful day, and it can get hot along the way. Mm-hmm. And as you come up into the town, there's usually a church that you can see for several miles. You know that's where you're going to end. Mm-hmm. And it can be straight uphill to that town, and you've already walked you know, 12 miles. Or it could be straight downhill to that town, and that's the end of your day. And then you the straight downhills to, are nice. You look for <laughs> downhills farther than you think. Yeah, you're, on the quads. But you have a great meal. And they, they give you a three-course meal and a big bottle of wine and you sit around with a lot of new friends and mm-hmm. it's awesome and you guys had a bunch of different types of dinners like in churches and 
pilgrim meals where everyone eats together. Pilgrim dinners we made together with pilgrims, and we all ate together. And you guys are called pilgrims on the walk. Yes. And the places you stay pretty much mostly for pilgrims. And um, one day they had a festival of St. James, and they f- the townspeople fed all the pilgrims, which is about 150. Hmm. And we ate outside, and um, there was singing, and uh, it was amazing, so amazing. It was uh, seafood paella, so the guys came in and had probably a 10 by 10, 10 feet by 10 feet paella pan. Oh, my gosh. That they fed a hundred, probably between 150 pilgrims, probably another 30 or 40 people, townspeople. Yeah. So maybe a couple hundred people that they fed plus seconds out of that <laughs> one 10 by 10 paella pan. That's crazy. It was crazy. How long was that dinner? Well, I think it started after mass was at seven. Dinner started probably eight thirty, and we were there till ten thirty. Probably. Okay, wow, it's like three hours. There was a guy there that was walking with his mother. Several mother, son, or daughter, mother combinations, um, father, son, and one guy there at that dinner uh, played "Amazing Grace" with his cupped hands. The music on, oh. played the music on his. That's cool. Uh, that was cool. Huh. Basically, it's a 1,300-year-old Christian pilgrimage that started with a belief that uh, St. James the Apostle, who was the first one of the apostles to be martyred, that his bones were basically brought to Spain and buried in this one location that, that they then built a church on, which is now a fabulous cathedral. And, so, and That's where they swing the incense? Yeah. Is it called incense? Yeah, there's a, it is incense, but there's a, the, a, there's a formal word for it. Bontefermo okay. is the formal word for the wow. the big thing they swing at the church, which hmm. is basically, it's probably five feet tall. Yeah, I think it's huge. And they, it takes uh, uh, six different volunteers monk, in monk-like the monks. costumes that, that swing it yeah. you know, at, during Mass. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome for people to go. Do go they check wear? Out. Do they wear like a gas mask or anything? Do th- no, no. Yeah. So they're just used to it. And since from the church, they're just like so used to it at that point. But the you know the walk became quite popular back a thousand years ago. Pilgrims were walking from their homes. The Spanish put all the infrastructure in place to protect them: hospitals mm-hmm. and and knights, um, and and making it as safe as they possibly could. But it kind of uh, uh, started to get less popular and really has ramped up again. And you know, this year, three hundred thousand people will walk some portion of the Camino. Yeah, so that's a lot of people. If uh, if your listeners haven't ever checked it out before, you know, they should Google Camino de Santiago and and see some of the stuff. When you, we've got cost of the airfare to get there, mm-hmm. but once you get there, it's the cheapest vacation anyone can take and, and has some yeah. amazing, amazing benefits. Yeah, because the places you stay are basically like hotels, but they're very cheap hotels um, where they're like $5 and you stay for the night and you get food sometimes included. Three course meal. Sometimes it's 10 if you don't euro, I should say. The rigorous exercise. <laughs> yeah. I'd say the, uh, you know, the, the, the cost, of, you know, I think you say six or seven Euros for uh, if you're staying in a state-run albergue, which is kind of like a, a nice hostel. Mm. Uh, the pilgrim's meal at night is about 10 euros. And okay. you got appetizer, entree, dessert, bottle of wine or right. something to drink. Uh, huge, very big portions usually. It's kind of like uh, camping on steroids. Because yeah. camping, I'm like you make food for everybody and you cut like a big buffet style. So you can have seconds if you want, but that's because someone else doesn't want seconds. Yeah, this it's not going to be you know. There's some meals, the family style meals that most of them are just more, but the one the other ones are just so big you're not going to need any more. Yeah, food. yeah. But for but on the low end on the budget side, for about twenty five dollars a day, that is your room, your board, your meals, and, and some beverages. You can you could go do this on twenty five dollars a day. You will. Don't forget the coffee con leche. The coffee con leche. <laughs> Very exactly. important. Exactly, and that's like the most important part of the day. Yeah. But you have the you know it started off for, for people that it was. 100% of the people were doing this for spiritual reasons, and it certainly has morphed. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual component is still a, a, an important component for many people, but there are people doing it for health reasons. There are people doing it for purification reasons um, and and a lots of their own reasons. But most of the people, they have a month to walk, so everyone that's mm-hmm. doing the 500-mile version, they usually have a story. Yeah. And, it's, and the emotional bond you make with people who are sharing the walk 
happen so quickly mm-hmm. that in in you know in a quick ten minute discussion you've kind of created a bond that uh, is hard to kind of put in comparison to how quickly and how deep that bond can be. Yeah, I remember, Mom, you mentioned that you bumped into someone that you've met, that you've known for 40 years. Well, I don't think it was a coincidence. I think it was a, a definitely my best Camino moment where the um, the beginning place that we stayed at the first night, we met some people from Sacramento. And, um, you know, we met like 35 people that night, but about then the next day you're on your way and you know you're going to run into people from the first night all along the way but about the fourth day we ran into him again and the one of the girls Anna Anna Rick and Gladys were the people we ran into Anna said I think I've met you before and sure enough um, she was best friends with somebody that was in our wedding Um, and a friend of mine from about 40 years ago (laughs) my gosh and she just remembered my name being Dandy, and then mm-hmm. I had moved from Austin to Virginia, and that her best friend had gone up to be in our wedding. That's and wild. So we connected with them all along the way and kind of made a new friendship. It was really cool. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, Art Jam that we met. We Your they friends like, from Germany. Yeah, they were not. They were only they were dating when we met them, and then he. Um, proposed on the Camino and then invited us to the wedding. Um, you and Julia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was a, that was an interesting friendship. So you to went me. to Germany for that wedding. Yeah. yeah that was interesting. Yeah. And of course, at the end of this last trip, Julia, your sister, flew back to Germany to see their baby. Baby, yeah. yeah. Super cool. So that's yeah. like, the Camino is definitely like one of those kind of places where you, it's like summer camp where you like build friendships, but the Camino is much much I think much more adult summer interactive camp. and like um, <laughs> yeah it's adult summer camp so what was uh, the best you said the, the best place your favorite place you went to was what do you think oh Saint, L- was it L- Los uh, Ar- Arcos that was probably the best most interesting meal or where Saint they fed us on St. James the day of St. James Festival. Okay. So the day of St. James Festival was yeah. in Los Arcos. Yeah. With okay. a nice meal. And you all didn't see your, fa- your favorite your favorite city was St. Sebastian? Or well, or that's, that's after the Camino. Okay. Now I'd say the, of the cities on the Camino, I mean, there's there's some of them that are great. So the bigger cities. Pamplona. Pamplona, we got to spend a with couple nights run. there. Yeah, the bull run. That's okay. We, we, did, we, we had just that. missed the running of the bulls. Mm. That happens for a week. It's from July 6th to July 13th. So ah, okay. we got to Pamplona just after, just after the bulls done. were done running. But that's a really fun town. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, Burgos is where we ended, and that's another big, beautiful city. And you know, there's a certain thing about enjoying the place where you where you finish. So that was that was fun. And we had an extra day there, and you get caught up with a lot of people you've seen while you're walking that you maybe hadn't seen. Right. Um, so those were both great cities, I think, on the Camino. And then there, are, you know, you learn to find great things in some of these smaller cities that that are great in their own right. I mean, we yeah. stayed in a little city called. Uh, Viana, uh, right after Los Arcos, and they were celebrating their 800th anniversary of the city. So, wow. you know, we we tend to think as a as a country, you know, <laughs> you know, we we uh, we about on uh, 200 not yet our 250th celebration as a country, right? They're doing their 800th That's crazy. anniversary of their city. So they had just done a week long celebration out there, and and uh, we were on the day they were. They were just finishing the celebration, and um, we had a lovely meal that day and met some really fascinating people enjoying that town. So sometimes the little towns become, you know, they're they're a little bit less noisy, a little bit less busy, and you get to have maybe a little bit more intimate conversation with some people and mm-hmm. catch up with them. So um, every town had its own beauty, whether whatever the reasons were, but Pamplona and Burgos, uh, at least from where we walked, are pretty awesome cities. The no injuries this time. No injuries. That's good. Everybody's safe. Except your sister Julia started the trip by showing up in a boot. She had oh just yeah, had the she had foot, foot surgery. surgery. Yeah, that's hilarious. No, not hilarious, but had foot surgery on Monday. Started walking on Friday. Wow. 
And so he carried that boot for about five days attached to the backpack <laughs> and then finally <laughs> left it. Uh, you know, some of the people are fascinating. We left it at a place called Cafe, Cafe Magica, Casa Magica. Casa Magica. That was great. Casa, Casa Magica. Magica. So a uh, place I had there. stayed before that I knew was great mm -hmm. and under new ownership. So it was interesting, these people, this lady had walked 18 Caminos. Oh my gosh. Um, um, <laughs> Polish couple. Oh, cool. They were from um, Tucson, Arizona. And after walking all those Caminos, she told her husband, I want to buy an albergue someday and come run it. Mm, makes sense. So they yeah. had bid on over 10 years of trying to buy an albergue, never, never actually getting it. And they just got, last year they bought Casa Magica. Oh, wow. So they were great. And they, they, they also did a, a communal style paella dinner, which which was great, and they're really fascinating, interesting people to talk to. We met another couple in Vienna from Canada, and they had left their homes and their families, quit their jobs, and moved to Vienna to run a uh, Christian coffee. coffee shop. Wow, okay. Vegan. So, so their only goal was to have people that would stop there who were walking, mm -hmm that they might be able to chat with them and show them some love and see if there was an opportunity to share their faith with them, share their faith with them. That's wild. And for that, they moved to Spain. They did not know one person. They didn't speak Spanish. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they ran this- An they English were, coffee shop. It's, it's an, yeah. So a coffee shop right on the main- Right on the main right drag. Main they Camino were, drag. Yeah. Oh, wow. she did foot soak for me that day. Uh, yeah. She put a bath, a little tub out, and let me soak my feet, huh. all my blisters, and that's so on. nice. Yeah, and also um, the most amazing part of the scenery was I never saw so many sunflowers in one place. Just sunflowers oh yeah, the sunflower everywhere. Field. And it was so cool because when we first started, it would be dark in the morning. So they would be mm. sleeping, and you actually saw the sunflowers wake up and face the sun, and wow. that was very cool. And lots of vineyards, and um, lots of vineyards, mountains, and a lot of cobblestones. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the the sunflowers was re were really cool. I got to see a picture oh, of those. Yeah. Yeah. And how new appreciation? How far did they go? Was it miles or just like big sunflower seeds? No, nah, they're just a lot of acres sunflower and fields, acres, and acres, and, and yeah. you tend. I hadn't. My previous walks, I hadn't really noticed them ah. because they really, July is, July, August kind of is ah, okay. their Peak. period of time to bloom. Gotcha. So it's uh, huh. the so first one we saw in Pamplona, oil. Julia and Teresa took a whole bunch of pictures of the yeah. sunflower seeds because they thought that might be <laughs> the only flower. sunflower field they had heard. <laughs> and then we saw them for uh, the for next hundred days. miles. <laughs> yeah. And I remember you guys um, had a, a cool interaction with some sheep and the, the shepherd. And One day, Shepherd allowed us to film him uh, hurting all the sheep. The dogs were hurting him. The goats heard the sheep. Oh. I mean, there must have been three hundred sheep that's, uh, wow, that's passing, oh and God. he stood there and let us. Three hundred. Yeah, wow. it was really cool. <laughs> Lots well, the animals on the Camino. Yeah, yeah, we saw a cow, um, but that was like the only. I think that was the only. Animal uh, I saw horses. in mine. Yeah, we saw lots of different animals back then. If you go back and look at the pictures, you'd, dogs. you'd oh, dogs, all the dogs, obviously, horses, but some horses. But the cow was the only one that was like wild, I think. Yeah. Although it had a bell on it, so maybe it wasn't wild. It was yeah, just it's like not just wandering, roaming, a roamer. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Well, uh, Villa Franco was where you met up with Doug. Doug joined us for mm -hmm. a short time on the Camino. That was great. We had a little celebration dinner and. A lot of the young people were there too, and hmm. um, that was fun. So. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think. Some, you know, we generally um, we tried to keep the walk into above 15 miles a day. Okay. Some of the guide the guidebooks will have a few days where they try to get 17 or 18, but I promise your mother we wouldn't walk more than 15 miles in any day. 15 is so. a good. A good would have to carry me. Yeah, 15 is pretty good. It's a pretty good number, and yeah. and she did a great job. But uh, anything more than that, you're not really taking time to like. And it was very hot. Yeah, and if you walk any more than that, you're not like paying attention to like what you do. You're just like. Full speed. Well, ahead. we were generally done by two o'clock. So okay. the real question was, were you going to walk until 
three or four, mm-hmm. right? And but we were generally done by two, and that leaves you plenty of time to relax in the cities that you're in, and mm-hmm. you know, grab a shower, clean your clothes, visit the town, maybe have a beer with somebody, and say hello to some people, and then come back and get ready for dinner. And you know, though the though the Spain, the country may eat late, the pilgrims don't eat late, right? Yeah, you know, so the pilgrims are eating generally by seven, and seven or eight. Yeah, you know, we're 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 done in back in the room and the lights <laughs> out by 10 so yeah because there's no more people are not getting up at 6 a.m to yeah to walk you're up early and you yeah. move it again it's a it's a real blessing so Five it's uh when all you got to think about if you're lucky it is to get up and walk right and you get up and stroll and you, you've met these people all during the walk we're kind of on the same path or, or pace you're on and you get to know some of them whether you see them on the walk or see them when you stop for coffee or mm-hmm. lunch or in town and Every every town, whether it's big or small, has an amazing church. Yeah, we went to you know the pilgrims' masses are in Spanish, so it's it's certainly learn some Spanish if you learn. Some necesito Spanish. necesito aprendas mas, and uh, <laughs> that means you need to learn more. Yeah, and uh, necesitas a aprend- couple other times at the end of the mass, the 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 priest would call up all the pilgrims to the altar and he'd give us a special blessing in a couple different places they gave us um that's prayer, probably why i didn't prayer hurt cards. myself <laughs> there they you gave go us prayer cards that's and and like los Acos gave it to you in your native language so oh, they had wow. lots of different options to be able to give it to you based upon your native language that's very cool and um so you know definitely there's an opportunity for a spiritual component of this that um you can find time in the churches. You can find time for solitude and, and thoughtful reflection. Um, so it isn't just the, you know, you know, sightseeing and, and the eating and all the other pieces. There's definitely coffee, a, coffee con leche there's and definitely beer. a spiritual <laughs> component. Yeah. With enough, um, with enough, you know, exercise, walking around and f- in close friends and some alcohol, you, you know, at the end of the day, you, it's, it's okay to get religious. It's not only okay, it's kind of one of the core reasons that people are there. Yeah, it's welcomed. Yeah. yeah. So not everybody, but for people who are looking for that experience, that's, that is very available and, and you know, an important component. We'll look forward to you joining us on the next yeah. Camino walk. Yeah, hopefully we can find some way to do a, a, a mobile podcast studio. Well, it worked out when <laughs> Doug met. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was interesting. So Doug just like met up with you. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been nice. So Julia and Teresa walked on in front of us because they were able to do more than 15 miles. And yeah. So after spending about a week with us, they 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 marched ahead of us to try to get to some of the bigger cities. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they they did a short day when Doug joined them, and we did a long day when. Uh, and okay. so we ended up meeting each other that day. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. And then you spent a week in uh, in Saint Sebastian, hanging out at the beach town. Instead Fabulous of down. instead of Finisterra, eating pintos. Well, since we finished in Burgos, we were quite a ways from Finisterra. Okay. Right? So many of the people that get to Santiago and finish there, they'll go on to the ocean mm. in Finisterra or or Muxia. Uh, but for us, we were we finished kind of in the middle of the walk, so we had lots of different options, and we've had the pleasure of being in some great cities in Spain. But we had heard great things about San Sebastian, never really spent a lot of time there. I've, I've, 25 years ago, I blew through there for a few days. Mm. Um, and so we went back there to having high expectations, and I'd say the city exceeded them. You know, it's kind of the beauty of a beach town, really beautiful, La Concha Beach, a couple really good hikes around there. And, uh, but it has kind of the luxury of a, of a grand European city. So um, there's some really, beauti- yeah. some really beautiful buildings, um, some gra- a great old town where it's and got pinchos, which are, uh, uh, you know, kind of in form of, um, you know, small plates tapas. like tapas. Mm-hmm. And then it also has uh, a little known fact, uh, more Michelin star restaurants than any city in Europe. So it has some really high end, beautiful restaurants. Cool. We got to try one of those. Uh, which is fun as well. So uh, that th- the beach town at the end of uh, end of walking was a nice combination, and your mother put it, got her shopping jeans back <laughs> in full force and filled up another suitcase. Very cool. Well, I uh, I appreciate you guys joining me. I'm um, gonna end it here. Wrap it up. 
Uh, thank you for visiting the studio. Thank you for helping me practice my two camera setup. And um, we'll have you on next time you guys have a, an interesting story to tell us. <laughs> Maybe you guys can think of something to add on. We can do Camino Part 2. Okay. Yeah, and just encourage people who are listening to check it out. Go online and check out Camino de Santiago. We put it in your list of places you may want to go in the future. It's a really great experience. There you go. That can be the call to action. Okay. Go Google Camino de Santiago Compostela. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. You're watching The Wink. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon for new notifications. Doodle doodle. Wow, ew. <laughs> Just kidding.